Hi, my name is Dr. Emma Dotson, and I'm a nurse practitioner at the Swedish Center for Healthy Aging. And today I will be presenting on cognitive rehabilitation strategies. I will be talking about five main areas of focus where we can make changes to improve our memory. The first area is adapting our environment. The second is using external memory aids. The third is following a set routine. The fourth is memory strategies we can use. And five, improving our general well being. We can't always control our memory, but we can alter our environment to support our memory better. One of the best ways to help people with memory problems is to adapt our environment so we can rely on our memory less. These are some examples of ways to adapt our environment to better meet our needs and provide a safety net in the setting of increased memory concerns. Having a landing pad for our important items, as you can see in this top right photo, can help prevent us from losing important things. If we continuously change the location of these important items, we're more likely to forget where they are. We can also attach important items on our person, such as a net cord for our glasses, or the carabiner on the right, right here, for our keys or our wallet. We can actually hook it onto our pant loop for when we're out and about. And I don't know um, how many times I've heard from my patients how distressing it can be to lose their glasses or wallet. So this is a helpful way to keep it on our person. They also make tiles pictured in this bottom photo where you can um, stick the tiles on important items and it syncs to your phone and alerts you where the item is. It has a certain mile radius. So if you drop it on the ground, you can go back and find the item. Labels can be useful for those who have difficulty finding objects, even labeling food when it's opened and when it expires, or writing do not eat past this certain date. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner can, can be helpful to label those meals. Also labeling drawers where important things are found, such as the shirt drawer or a pants drawer. For somebody with more severe memory loss, maybe painting the bathroom door to indicate this is the bathroom might be a helpful reminder for when the person is becoming um, more disoriented and needs those more obvious reminders. And for our external memory aids, lists are an important compensatory mechanism for everyone, but particularly helpful for when we struggle with remembering items or what we need to get done. Diaries and journals can help us keep track of what we did in our day and also document our feelings and thoughts at different times in our lives. Sometimes it's nice to read later and remember how we might have felt in those moments. Having a large calendar, maybe on a whiteboard with the schedule and plan for the day can be helpful for those with memory loss so they can reorient themselves and have a reminder of what's to come in the day or upcoming days. Photos are a lovely way of keeping memories of loved ones and pets Having a digital photo frame, like in this last picture on the right, um, is nice because it can constantly transition between photos and provide a special reminder of who we care about. Keeping track of medications, especially when there are many of them, can be very difficult for anyone. Having an automatic medication dispenser can consolidate the steps of remembering when the medications are due and prevent overdose or missing medications. And I promise I have no affiliation with Amazon, but the Alexa is a very technologically advanced way to support people with memory challenges and really maximizes the abilities that technology has to offer us. So the Alexa can talk to you and um, the specific Alexa care partners um, can um, either, so they can talk, your care partners can talk to you through the Alexa and it sends alerts um, for medications or prompts for activities. It also has a fall sensor and can alert people on the system if somebody falls. And the Alexa can of course do tasks around the house, which is turn on lights, answer questions about the weather or dates and multiple care partners such as friends or family can be on one account. 
Following a set routine is really important for consistency. It's helpful for those with memory loss because those individuals can get used to what to expect and it helps reduce the demands on memory. A nighttime and morning routine can provide consistency, help promote restful sleep and productive days. Maybe in the morning, you wake up almost every morning around eight, have coffee or tea, breakfast, then you walk the dog or do an exercise routine and go about your day. And then maybe around in the evening, around dinner, you begin to wind down, watch your favorite show, have some sleepy time tea, shower, maybe smell some aromatherapy oils, and then brush your teeth and read until you're tired and go to bed. Having this consistency can help promote both sleep and wake cycles and aid in enhanced cognition. Sometimes having a scheduled housework day, like every other Thursday is laundry day, or a specific housework day can help those with memory loss participate in more of these activities if they do them regularly each week. It's important to incorporate fun and social activities in our schedule too. So maybe having an every other Friday game night or social event with friends can be a great relaxing way to spend our time and promote our well-being. So for memory strategies, our first memory strategy will be for encoding memory. Encoding is the act of moving information from the temporary store in our working memory to the permanent storage in our long-term memory. Working memory has a limited capacity and can only hold about seven to nine, plus or minus two, pieces of information at a time. If you want to store more information, the information will need to be structured and presented in a manner that is conducive to how our brains process information. Chunking is a encoding strategy, and it's the act of breaking down information into manageable segments and delivering them in short bursts. Information needs to be presented in a way that links the new information to something we already know. So let's say at the store, we need to get a few items. We can categorize these items by, for example, apples and bananas are fruits, celery and carrots are vegetables, and sugar and flour are baking items. So remembering the categories helps us remember the long list of items. Mnemonics are also helpful. So let's say we need to go to the store and remember to pick up bananas, eggs, nectarines, and tea. We might remember the mnemonic bent for bananas, eggs, nectarine, and tea. Visuals can be helpful as well. So maybe you picture a big banana juggling eggs with a nectarine on its head with a tea bag hanging off. That might be helpful for you to remember and visualize the items you need to get. Associations help us encode memories better because it helps us relate one idea to another, increasing the likelihood that it will stick. So let's say somebody tells me about their dog named Milo and I had a best friend named Milo. I'm already associating those two names and then I might be more likely to remember the name Milo. Even if it's difficult to make up an association, it can be something crazy. Like for example, in this picture, we're trying to remember that Sofia is the capital of Bulgaria. So the, the image is a bull named Gary, like Bulgaria, um, on, sitting on a sofa like Sofia with a hat or a cap, meaning capital. So even if, if it's this crazy elaborate association, it will hopefully stick in our heads easier. The second memory strategy involves retrieval. So anytime you successfully call on a memory, you're practicing retrieval. Successful retrieval depends on your ability to recognize and utilize the cues around you in the encoding process and also access them during the retrieval process. There is a particular exercise called the space retrieval practice, and it's used a lot in dementia and memory care. And basically you partner with your care partner um, and you sit across from one another and the first time increment is about five to 30 seconds and then it can increase from there. So the person with memory loss identifies what they'd like to remember. So maybe Bob wants to remember his wedding anniversary or Jay needs help remembering to use her cane. So first, the person sees if they can retain the information during the 30 second increment. Then you slowly increase the increments from there. 
And then sometimes a visual cue can be helpful. So maybe somebody's trying to remember their anniversary date. So having a photo of the day they got married is helpful and it's a good visual aid to remind the person of that time and therefore encode that memory better. And then they, the care partner continues to ask the same question and continues to increase the time period between. So for example, another example would be if somebody wants to remember to use their, or to put the brakes on their wheelchair, they can actually do the act of putting the brakes on their wheelchair while they're practicing this exercise as a visual cue as well. And some people can remember with just one session and other people it takes multiple. And this isn't effective for everyone. It depends on the degree of memory loss, but it can be a very effective tool for people that have some memory loss, but not super extensive memory loss. The third memory strategy involves storage. Let's say you're about to read some information that you would like to remember. So the PQRST strategy would be preview, question, read, summarize, and test. Preview the information you're about to read, scan it. Read the outline at the beginning of the chapter, paying attention to the headings and sections. Then read the summary. For question, as you read through each, read through each section, ask yourself, what am I supposed to learn? This helps get your brain in sync with the topic being discussed. For read, now actually read the section. Think about the meaning and relate this to other things you know about similar topics. Underline and highlight key words. For summarize, remember the main points of each section and say them out loud to yourself. Fact checked against the text and see what you missed out on. And then for test, test yourself. How many main ideas can you remember? Think about the relevance and how it all fits together. For other memory strategies, combining modes of learning can be very helpful. So you're more likely to remember something if you see it, say it, write it, hear it, do it. Let's say you need to remember a chord on a guitar. You first read the music, then you say out loud the chord, then you write it out, then you practice. This increases your chance of mastering the chord. Repeat and verify, repeating what you hear and verifying that it's correct to improve your attention and memory. Eliminating distractions is very important. So turning off the TV music or whatever else is on when you're speaking to someone that you need to remember what they said. Background noise and stimuli can make learning more difficult. If you're having a difficult time concentrating, take a break and refresh and then go back at it. Do one thing at a time. Switching between activities can cause you to miss things or forget what you were doing. Focusing on one task at a time is more, is more beneficial than you can switch the ne next task when you're finished. Cognitive stimulation is very important for dementia prevention and slowing the progression of dementia. The goal is to push your skills, but not discourage or overwhelm yourself. We recommend at least one hour per day of cognitive engagement, whether it's a new activity, reading, games, or socializing. And um, down here on the slide are some computer games that you can look into to help stimulate your brain. Lastly, the brain and the body are connected through neural pathways made up of neurotransmitters, hormones, and chemicals. These pathways transmit signals between, signals between the body and the brain to control our everyday functions from breathing, digestion, pain sensations, to movement, thinking, and feeling. When we prioritize our physical health, we prioritize our mental health and vice versa. So as a reminder, ways to improve our well-being with our body and mind are first to exercise. So the recommendation is 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of high intensity exercise per week and also incorporating weight-bearing exercise. As we talked about at one of our previous SMAs, sleep is very important. And the recommendation is seven to nine hours per night. And then stress management, as we talked about in our last session, is really, really critical because chronic stress decreases the size of our hippocampus and can affect our memory and cognition, as well as other 
changes to our body. Self-care is very important, prioritizing ourselves and what we need for both our mind and body. And then our quality of life, what's most important to us. Eating well, the Mediterranean or mind, low sodium Mediterranean style of eating to promote healthy brain health. And that's the end of our presentation today. Feel free to reach out to us with any comments or questions. And thank you all for listening.